Hi guys, so this is a little video response to Priscilla's Let's Talk discussion videos. I'll link those below in the doobly-doo in my pants, they're fantastic. One of the discussion topics she's raised um, has been why we love YA. So, um, <clears throat> my history with YA is a little bit fragmented. Um, between the ages of about 12-15, I was reading teen fiction, but it was essentially uh, stuff by Australian authors, because that was what was heavily promoted in bookstores and at school. And aside from Libby Haythorn, who's excellent, um, and I found her works quite emotionally engaging. I read a lot of John Marsden because he was the author everyone was talking about and teens loved him. Um, yeah, he was very, very hyped, especially his Tomorrow series, of course, but he had standalone works that I prefer. And everyone seemingly loved him and his books. So I read them and I found that the narratives were really engaging and I, you know, I still, I still connected with the story, but I was having a very hard time relating to the characters, especially the protagonist, and he always tends to write female protagonists. So he were these teen girls I was reading about, and they all seemed very, to use a very generalised term, mainstream. And it kind of hit me quite hard a lot of the time. I felt very distanced and alienated from these works, because especially at high school where labels fly about and everybody's, you know, segmented, um, I was kind of on the fringe, being an arty, farty, theatery reading girl. Um, most people thought I was weird. So I didn't display normal traits and I kept reading about these protagonists who seemed so, so normal it was, it was hurtful and I kept thinking if you were a three-dimensional living person you would hate me or you would snub me or you would tease me and that ended up being really depressing and so it really brought the experience of reading these books down and in the end I just decided it wasn't worth it so I moved on to reading just a lot of classics because you can't beat a good classic and um, just adult fiction because I found that even if I still wasn't making strong connections with protagonists in adult fiction at least it didn't feel as hard hitting because the age thing wasn't an issue anymore so um, I don't know, it, that was just something I think when you're a teen especially, because you're so vulnerable and your emotions are running right anyway, um, to have, to be reading about characters that you can feel like there's a little bit of you in them, not, you know, I, I would never want to read about myself in a book, that would be disgusting and horrific, but to see elements of yourself in a character and, and knowing that that's okay that you're okay, you know, your interests, your feelings, your experiences, your characteristics are okay. It's just there's something reassuring and comforting about that, that I think if you're a reader when you're a teen, it's, I don't know, it was something I felt I needed and I wasn't finding it. So yeah, kind of gave up on teen fiction for quite a while. Then when I was 20, almost 21, my friend sent me Twilight and New Moon and A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. So I read those, and I was completely out of the loop. I didn't know about any of the hype gaining around Twilight, though I will say I think I was one of the first people, I certainly one of the first people I know in this country to read the series. Um, this was before Australia seemed to know anything about it. Oh, so slow. Um, so yeah, I, re I read those, and not only were they enjoyable, easy reads, t the Twilight ones especially, but... Um, in A Great and Terrible Beauty especially, I discovered that there were characters in there, actually all four of the, the central girls in that, in that narrative, have traits and um, interests, passions, fears, things that are a little bit left of centre and that I could kind of relate to all four of them quite easily and I was thinking, wait a minute, is, is someone finally giving, you know, <laughs> the outcast a bit of attention? Um, in you know in mainstream teen fiction and that was that was the first kind of awakening that kind of really piqued my interest in in going back to this age bracket of books so um yeah that really started it off and also the fact that um i wasn't being sent um realistic teen fiction which is what i read when i was a teen um suddenly i was getting sent like um fantastical work, which has always been fantasy, is the genre I love. 
so you know the paranormal romance and stuff um, was becoming the hip and happening thing again uh, re-emerging and I don't think it's just the fact that, you know, Twilight came along and then all these new works sprang up from that, like it was the tree and now it sprouted these leaves. I think that, uh, I mean, that has been the case. There's been tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of new works coming out and that's really exciting and cool. But also it's managed to turn attention back onto works that already existed that may have been ignored or forgotten or just didn't receive the attention that they did because, like, that it just wasn't the thing at the time when they were released and Twilight happened to come along at the right time in the right place and it's sort of the adrenaline boost for for this age bracket and this subgenre of, of fantasy for teens and I think that's great I mean I may you know have my issues with the series but if we can credit Twilight with that then I do have to say thank you to Stephanie Meyer and also I'm gonna have to admit something embarrassing it has been nice for me uh, to be reading some some paranormal romances within the teen lit uh, because during my teens, during high school, I had no love life. So I guess it's sort of a vicarious living thing even though I'm now out of that age bracket and you know I'm not in high school anymore, thank God. Um, reading about these, these teen romances has been nice. I think. Um, yeah, just a bit of a guilty pleasure. Given that they're written well and they're characters that are actually likeable, then yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, just been something nice to indulge in and think, oh, wouldn't that have been, wouldn't that have been nice if that could have been me when I was a teen? But more so, it's just been really good to discover characters that I do wish could have I could have known were in existence or had been in existence when I really needed them when I was a teen. I think that I felt very emotionally detached from a lot of my reading back then. And if I could have had the experiences that I've had in the past few years, then, I don't know, I think it just would have helped me out a little, just how I was feeling inside at the time, but anyway. I'm glad they're in existence now, though, because it's been a lot of fun to be reading these books. I think, honestly, can say I've had probably more enjoyment out of reading with these novels up here in the past two years than I think I had for quite some time before that. So, yeah, I don't know if any of this made any sense. I'm so tired. I haven't slept for two days, really, and I'm in a lot of pain, a lot of pain right now. So I'm going to go because I'm rambling and it's going to be too long and it won't upload. Um, so thank you Priscilla for your videos, your discussion videos, and I'm going to try and make a few more responses if I can. So that's all for now everybody. Goodbye.